is 50%. So it, when we get to, the reason we can't go higher is because of the substation. It has a reverse flow limit. And so that's what these are doing. The difference is this is looking at the whole system and it's just, it's just putting PV wherever there's uh, customers. And just kind of lifting the whole boat until it finds a problem. Um, so this is going to be more along the tradition of feeder, feeder based. Um, you know, what's the hosting capacity for my feeder? Whereas with the incremental stuff, we're saying what's the capacity of individual sections? That's the focus there. Um, they're both good tools, and it kind of depends on what you're what you're doing. <clears throat> this demand one is probably uh, ready for retirement and a short life here, but it is based on calculations, and uh, it uses. Uh, I think the idea there is to make sure that. If, if I've got a, a substation transformer that is, it can handle a certain level, routinely has, handles a certain level of forward power flow, then I can have enough PV on the feeders for that substation until I get to that same level of reverse power flow and everything should be fine. And so it's, it just goes through the calculations, tries to figure out when the peaks occur and does the arithmetic. So that's what that does. This last one here is kind of neat. And I'm becoming more of a fan of it as I as I talk to clients about it. Let me find a feeder here that let's try this one. Get some crazy looking plots with this sometimes. Try this one. So with this stochastic, we wanted to use a fancy word we we're trying to show off here. If you if you read out triple papers and stuff like that, they call it this. And I think we're, we're going to get a more sensible name here. Of, it's just a kind of a random random placement of PV generators. <coughs> so we're going to go and we're going to create profiles. So this thing is set for 20 profiles. Let's just go in and create one profile right now. Run this thing. And so there we go. It's starting off with no, no additional PV. And we're adding, you see these dots. It, it looks pretty uniform even from here. But there you can see a little bit of wobble. The gaps are changing a little bit. And so we're coming in and we're putting in uh, units or, or sets of PV, so maybe three or four units at a time. And the size is randomly determined. So I'll bring up the settings here for this thing. So we're putting in uh, uh, 50 units of steps. So we're putting in a bunch at a time here, 50 units at a time. And for each unit, it's going to randomly find a location. And it's going to randomly find a size. And I wish we had a graph in here for this. It, it looks kind of like a, a swoosh. And it peaks out at about 4 kW. And at the time, I think it was a Sandia report that did a survey of customers. And the average is about 4 kV. Now I think the average is about 7 kV or kW for the, uh, for the generation. And so it's, a, uh, it's shifted to, to higher levels. But you can set the values in here. <clears throat> we figure out. So saying there's a 85% chance that it's a small unit, it could be a consumer. And the other 15 is it's going to be a large IPP-ish type of unit, or a rooftop solar, those things. So it rolls the dice, figures out which column, 85% chance it's in this column. It rolls the dice again to figure out what the size is, places the unit, and it just keeps doing that. It's going to do 50 units at a time until we get up to uh, 8 megawatts there. This chart shows voltage. So I'm going to run it one more time. And uh, let's go up to uh, 10 profiles. So we get a, this cloud looking thing. So, you know, I think you, this is something you're going to run 100, 200 times, 200 cases instead of just 10. Larry, why don't you look at max volts instead? Yeah. That might be a little more interesting. Yeah, good. And this is the tap changer. I can't explain it. Um, if, we, if we sat down maybe over beers, we could figure it out. But the, the low tap changer is causing this. And uh, just different locations um, cause the tap changer to do uh, to, to operate differently. Now. You see this kind of thing, Jason? On the, yeah, OK. So uh, this, uh, these kinds of reports, I've seen them out of uh, 
<coughs> Sandia, NREL, maybe PNNL does these. Um, and they're, they're really cool because you get these clouds. And so the idea, if, uh, if we say we don't want our maximum voltage to exceed, let's just say 100, this point right here. It's kind of low right now, but let's say it was this value of voltage. We don't want to exceed this. So you come across here. If this had been run 200 times, this would be a nice cloud. Come across here where this intersects the cloud, we go down. That's the level of PV, maybe 3 megawatts. And as long as we stay within 3 megawatts, it doesn't matter where we put it, what the sizes are, where it goes, we're going to be in this green area. So every Sandia, NREL, those folks, you'll see the charts from them, and they're green, uh, yellow, and red. And Johnny, I think you do these too, right? And so you've got these, these color-coded charts. Then the middle would require you. So if we go to 120, to this voltage again, and we go to the other side of the cloud, we get a little band here that would be yellow. And so what that means is that it's kind of iffy. It depends on the locations. So that's where you come in. You've got to do some supplemental studies, those kinds of things, to figure out what, what makes sense. And then when you get to the back side of the cloud and beyond, that's all red. It doesn't matter where it goes. Once you exceed that level, it's, uh, it's too much. So we, we're categorizing this. When you start looking at the, the reports from those other groups, they, they look at voltage, loading, uh, desensitization, all kinds of stuff in these charts. And they're, they're really neat. And, uh, but, so we've got a, a tool in Synergy to kind of do something along those lines.